It's 2023, and in the motocross world, we have a new championship, the Super Motocross Championship, where you combine Supercross points with motocross points, plus an additional three playoff races. For example, last year, Eli Tomac swept both Supercross and motocross, easily making him what would be the 2022 Super Motocross Champion. Now, is this new Super Motocross Championship really a new concept? Let's go back to 1983 and find out. 1983 was a pivotal year for motocross. This marked the beginning of the Wrangler Super Series, otherwise known as the Grand National Championship. The Grand National Championship was a championship where you combine both Supercross and Motocross points to award a Grand National Champion. Wrangler was the title sponsor of this new series, which brought in a lot more money into the sport of motocross and some new eyes. He's off the bike, he drops the bike. He's coming up on that yellow number six. Glover on the inside. Glover now begins to pull away as Larson and Dave Bailey begin to battle. The ride, but there's a problem of visibility too. Gary Gerald has this report. Again, Brock Glover at number six. Dave Bailey, Glover's off the bike. Between he and victory in his first ever Supercross, the checkered flag. That's great, I wish everybody out there could feel the way I do right now, man. This is an all-time high. Until the absolute final second, and I crash, I normally crash awfully hard. Checkered and Bob Hurricane Hannah takes the Daytona Supercross. Barnett in second. Oh! Glover running second. They call it the full floater. Barnett's bike and Glover pulls up on the inside. In the air, hand to hand combat. And Glover is taking it. No! Number six is wheel just inside for just a moment. Oh, and Glover's down! Supercross, Mark, the bomber Barnett! It's going to be a dogfight the rest of the way. I hope so. I'm ready to fight. In front of Anna. Oh, Ward goes down! So the stage is set for the main event. And out in front is David Bailey. Oh, Hanna almost goes down! Paid off. He's in front. Bob Hanna in front. Bailey second. Here comes Barnett trying to take out Glover. He has taken over the lead. Bailey has gone in front of Hanna. It is Bailey, Hanna, Glover. We've got 13 laps to go. Bob, Hanna on the inside. He's got it. Bob, Hurricane Hanna. Hanna is absolutely exhausted sitting in the chair. Country for the 20,000 motocross fans in attendance. A chance to escape the city. The job, the daily routine. Over the whoop to doos here comes the hurricane, Bob Hannock. And Hannah is pouring it on. Having already won the 1983 Supercross title and just... I can now play like a little warm out there. It's very much involved in the emotions of winning and losing. Hannah... Didn't even want to go that fast. I'm still tired. And then uh, probably broke a tooth off the gearbox or something and just seized it up. Well, Bailey has dropped off to fourth place behind Johnson and Bernworth, who are second and third. He's got to pour it on if he wants a shot at that Super Series Triple Crown. David Bailey can almost taste it. Charging like a wild rhino is Mark the Bomber Barnett. Barnett, who flew by O'Mara and Holland, realizes this is the final two motos of the year. He's all but lost the 125 National Championship. And now Barnett must claw his way to the Super Series Championship. A bomber is riding like a man possessed. He wants it bad. David Bailey, are you watching? That's how Moto wants it. Once again, young Ron Lachine usurped Barnett's chances of getting ahead in the point standings for the Super Series crown. After finishing fourth in the first moto, Bailey and Barnett were in a virtual dead heat in the point standings, with Barnett holding a slight advantage. If they both won their respective motos, Barnett would win the Super Series. This is the end of the season, the last 250 moto of the year, and everything's on the line. Hannah is pouring the pressure on. Hannah's moving to first.
first. Bailey is going to catch him to stay close to Barnett for the Super Series. But Bailey was not to be muffed by the heat of the moment and systematically regained the lead from Bob Hanna. Going in for the checkered flag, David Bailey wins it! With his last moto of the year safely tucked away in the victory column, all that was left for Bailey was to sit and watch the final 125 event. If either O'Mara, Lachine, or Ward could keep Barnett one step behind them, the Super Series and the Triple Crown would belong to the little professor. 25cc moto of the year. Barnett's got the inside line for the whole shot, and Juan Lachine is on his tail. The Bomber, on the other hand, has got to win if he's going to take the Super Series championship away from Bailey. And wait a minute, here comes Juan Lachine. He's pouring it on. He's taking Barnett. He takes O'Mara, and now he takes the checkered flag. David Bailey, are you watching? All right, this Grand National Championship needs a little bit of explaining. In 1983, in Supercross, there was only the 250cc class. However, in the Outdoor Motocross Series, there was the 125, 250, and 500cc class. What makes this championship interesting is David Bailey wins the lone Supercross championship. But in the outdoors, David Bailey rides the 250 class, while his main competitor for the Grand National Championship, Mark Barnett, rides the 125 class. Now, even though they're racing in separate classes, whoever earns the most points from each class is the Grand National Champion. In Supercross, David Bailey scored 289 points with Mark Burnett scoring 282. However, in Outdoor Motocross, Bailey scored 440 points in the 250 class, while Mark Burnett scored 441 in the 125 class. Basically, when it came to the outdoors, however many points you accumulated in your different class went towards the Grand National Championship. It wasn't just a 250 championship. This probably sounds pretty confusing, but it's very interesting nonetheless. In 1983, David Bailey would be a three-time champ, winning the 250 Supercross, 250 Outdoor, and the Grand National Championship. In 1984, David Bailey would get to run this blue plate with the gold number one, which signified the Grand National Champion. Number one, Bailey, they go off the line. Johnson moves over and cuts off his teammate, Glover. They go Glover on the inside, passing, now going to the inside. The pressure on him. These guys are tough. They've got to be in top physical condition. Bailey comes back, Glover comes back. Last year, Honda's David Bailey won every major motocross title there was and tried to take away the 500cc title from Yamaha's Brock Glover. Bailey soon harnessed the power of his machine and put on a display of dominance. He not only won the first five nationals, but swept each of the motos in convincing fashion. In May, the Glover won his first moto of the year. Bailey went on to clinch the title. Bailey again won the Grand National title, which goes to the rider who compiles the best record in both outdoor motocross and supercross events. 1984 would mark the end of the Grand National Championship as conflict between the AMA and Supercross promoters because of the Wrangler sponsorship came to a head, which caused the championship to come to an end. And now in 2023, we have a new and improved version called the Super Motocross Championship. What do you guys think of the new Super Motocross Championship? Should they bring back the blue play with the gold number one? Who do you think is going to be the inaugural Super Motocross Champion? Comment below. Thanks for watching. We'll check you guys later.